fuck. <laughs> Hey everyone and welcome back to Auto Wisdom. Today we are sitting behind the wheel of a 2013 BMW M6 Coupe of the F13 generation. Now this is a very interesting car because BMW has moved on from the 6 Series platform, they no longer produce it, and the M6 was sort of the flagship motorsport model that represented some of the best that the M division could put out in terms of technology, engineering, and driving dynamics. Windows down. Now this specific example of an M6 has been graciously provided to me by a very close friend of mine. And I do want to touch on the exterior styling and design of this vehicle before going into anything else in relation to this review. I genuinely believe that the design of this car was an absolute high point for BMWs. In fact, the F-Series chassis of BMWs overall represents one of the best, if, if not golden eras, if you will, of BMW exterior design language. This car is absolutely beautiful to look at from almost every single angle. And now that it is over 10 years old, I believe that it has aged very gracefully from the long sweeping front end with the low proportions and the sleek roof line featuring a carbon fiber roof to the shorter rear end and trunk the wide proportions the aggressive styling but nothing is overdone it doesn't feel like this car is trying too hard to be overly aggressive and as a result of that you just get such a beautiful gt styled coupe um, that again, I really just think emphasizes some of the best of BMW's design language at the time. And like I said, over 10 years old with this car, guys, and it just, it looks so modern and stunning on the road. <laughs> So this example in particular is finished off in BMW's individual frozen black paint over a black merino leather interior with carbon fiber accents everywhere. It is also lowered on H&R Sport Springs to lower the ride height about an inch all around. And in addition to that, it also helps to add some in increased aggression to the stance of the vehicle. We also have um, a set of wheel spacers in the rear. We have 20 inch Ferrata wheels, so 20 by 10 up front and 20 by 12 in the rear, 275 Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires in the front, and 335 wide in the rear. Believe me, you guys will see in just a little bit that you will need every single bit of tire being put to the ground because this car produces a lot of power. In addition to that, we have a set of Project Gamma front mounted intakes that sound absolutely menacing, Project Gamma ceramic coated catless downpipes, we have a resonator delete paired to a Valvetronic axle back muffler system that is fully valved. Now to wrap all those bolt-on mods together, we have a custom flash through the boot mode platform, which is a very popular software tuning platform for a lot of BMW enthusiasts. This is a custom flash that is actually running an ethanol blend of around 30% or E30, if you will. And estimated power figures are around 600 horsepower to the wheels and well over 550 pound-feet of torque to the rear wheels as well. And it feels every bit of it, guys. Let's do a little pull, shall we? The sheer power that this car produces is incredible, guys. It is so ballistically fast. The way that the power is delivered to the rear wheels comes on in such an aggressive nature, and I'm not entirely sure if that's just due to the uh, programming of this car from the factory or if that's a result of the custom tune, but it is incredibly aggressive. You get torque very early on as a result of these twin scroll turbochargers. And not only that, the power will overwhelm the rear wheels very, very easily. It is actually somewhat frightening to drive this car just because of how much power it produces. And again, how 
non-linear, if you will, the power band is. I will say though that in the hands of a seasoned and experienced driver, this car is stupidly fast and it is extremely capable. It is so easy to reach triple digit speeds in this thing. And again, that traction control light is going to be saving you if you don't know what you're doing. Do not turn traction control off in this car if you're not used to high powered rear wheel drive vehicles. My God, I, I really can't even dig my foot into the throttle pedal all that much just because of how quickly this car picks up speed. It's already time to slow down by the time I'm in the next gear. Now we do need to highlight this power plant which is a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 engine and it is codenamed the S63 TU. It is a dragon breathing monster. This engine is absolutely insane. Now, as stated previously, this engine is 4.4 liters in displacement, and it is a hot V setup, meaning that the turbochargers sit in between the cylinder banks of the engine. They are twin scroll units. We also have fully forged internals, so the crankshaft, connecting rods, and pistons are all strengthened from the factory and are made of lightweight materials to ensure the high revving nature of this car, which features a 7,400 RPM redline. It also features a magnesium oil sump, air to water intercooling. Of course, all this power is sent through a seven speed M dual clutch transmission, which to this day, guys, is a world-class transmission. This dual clutch system is so incredibly good. It's extremely responsive. The paddle shifters provide an almost instantaneous response to gear changes. And not only that, you get a very satisfying amount of snappy, and aggressive gear changing action with this car. And I believe that this transmission truly is superior to uh, the ZF eight speed unit that is a torque converted gearbox that is being utilized in a lot of newer BMWs across all of the M lineup today. It's more responsive, it feels more motorsport oriented, and it feels like a proper supercar transmission that really suits the immense character of this car. I know that the ZF transmission is interchangeable due to the X-Drive and rear-wheel drive platforms. I understand that it can you know, hold higher amounts of torque and power uh, relative to the newer BMW M vehicles, but this dual clutch is its superior. It feels faster, it's snappier on the upshifts and the downshifts as well, and it's incredibly fast. I love the transmission and I cannot say enough good things about it. And in addition to that, driving it on the street in a you know, efficiently oriented manner, it provides very subtle and smooth gear changes. You wouldn't even realize that it's a dual clutch, but then when you put it into manual mode and put it into the most aggressive shift setting, the responsiveness of it is just brutal, as you guys could probably tell on the camera. Now, while BMW has used an extensive amount of aluminum and carbon fiber in this car to help reduce the curb weight and aid in overall chassis rigidity and stiffness, this is still a very heavy car. We're talking a curb weight of close to 4,300 pounds, and you do feel that weight to some degree, but I am taking this car through some gorgeous Southern California back roads today, and I will say that the handling dynamics and the chassis of this car BMW has this really almost magical way of disguising very hefty curb weights and making a car handle much better than it really should in all honesty. And this M6 really is no exception. It handles surprisingly well. Uh, granted, I'm driving this thing at probably five, six tenths of what it's capable of, but the EDC adaptive suspension is properly damped. I actually have it in the comfort mode right now because in Sport Plus setting, it is very, very stiff. Uh, likely, you know, designed for racetrack use. And with these H&R sport springs as well, you feel a very low center of gravity with the car. 
and it just seems to soak up these corners very well. I, I don't feel a ton of body roll, although I'm sure if I really do start to push it through corners, I might start to experience a, a little more of that you know, suspension slop, if you will. But overall, the handling for what this car is, is pretty impressive. And again, this is not designed to be you know, a supercar or a sports car designed for heavy track use. It's, the M6 is more of a GT car. It provides a monstrous power plant that also features you know, a lot of luxury and uh, comfort amenities on your daily drive. All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna give it another pull. Oh my. This power delivery, again, I just, I know I touched on it previously, but it is so immense. I really just cannot, you know, emphasize how incredibly fast it is. And on the top end, this thing pulls like a freight train. I mean, I would not be surprised if this car could hit 180 miles per hour effortlessly. You know, I haven't taken this thing on the freeway, but I'm also quite sure that you can hit well over 150 miles an hour in this car, very high triple digit speeds. Even right there, again, the traction control light is blinking and it, it is scary. I mean, you really have to respect the power plant and the power band of this car. You have to keep in mind that all this power is being sent to the rear wheels via an electronically uh, controlled limited slip differential. And when you have that much power, it's very easy to break the rear end and step this car out. Holy crap. I don't know if you could tell on my face, but this, I'm actually a little bit scared to drive this car, especially on these back roads. I think it's just, it's too much car for windy roads. Um, you really just need sort of like an open highway or just a very long track or road that features, you know, long sweeping corners that gradually descend and turn. Uh, but, you know, technical and tight roads definitely do not suit the brutal nature of this car. I mean, this thing is just begging to be pushed into very, very high speeds. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's just frightening. I, I'm literally like, I, I feel almost out of breath to some extent because of just how brutal the power band is of this car. It feels every bit of 600 wheel horsepower. In fact, it feels, it feels more powerful than that, guys. This thing feels like it's producing over 700 horsepower. I'm not sure if that's because the ambient temps outside are nice and cool um, and you know just caught this car on a good day, but it is very, very fast and fun to drive just because of how stupidly bonkers it is. Turn on to this open road right here and let's go ahead and give it a quick send. Oh my. That is bonkers. I do feel like for very high speed driving and cornering, the Sport Plus setting is actually quite beneficial. That actually did help to reduce the body roll uh, to some degree in this car. And now that I'm on a road that features some longer, wider turns, this car is quite capable. And you can really carry some very high speeds um, through these sloping corners. Steering feel is actually not too bad. This car features a hydraulic steering rack that is electronically assisted via what BMW calls a servotronic motor that can adjust the weight and feeling of the steering. And you do get a decent amount of feedback. Um, although I will say I've definitely experienced better hydraulic power steering systems in cars like Porsches and even the older E9X chassis BMW, such as the E92 M3. Um, I think those are some of the pinnacles of steering. But this, you know, for how large this car is, given its 4,000 pound plus curb weight, and it's grand touring like nature. Not bad at all. I do like the M6 a lot, guys. I think it has an incredibly monstrous and dragon-like power plant, especially with those front-mounted intakes that sound insane. It's got a phenomenal dual-clutch transmission that is extremely responsive, great suspension setup, and while this car by no means is 
gonna make for an excellent canyon carver or a track ready vehicle, you're not gonna be buying it for that reason. Everybody knows that the M6 fulfills the Grand Touring purpose and it does it quite well. It's designed to compete against cars like Aston Martins and Porsche 911 turbos and it makes for a very stout competitor. You know, even though that this car is well over 10 years old, its technology, hardware and design have held up to the test of time very well. This car feels modern, it looks modern, it drives modern. And I have a great amount of respect for what BMW did with the M6. I'm really curious to see how the M8, which is the successor to this car, compares. And I definitely don't think I'll be let down with that car either. So with that being said, I'm going to end this review here. Thank you so much for watching and tuning into the video, guys. If you made it all the way to the very end, I appreciate it very much. Feel free to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing content. And with all that being said, I will catch you all in the next one. Take it easy, everybody.